that too. So I've done my introduction, the patient's aware of the procedure we're going to be doing. I've also verified um, two patient identifiers, such as name and date of birth. And now I'm going to proceed by putting on some gloves. And then we'll talk about our other supplies in addition to the gloves. So to my right, I have a trash can. I also have a laundry basket. Here I have a basin of water that's at a safe and comfortable temperature. I also have some soap that I'm going to move a little bit closer to me. I like to put a towel on top of the table, especially if I'm going to be using a table as a work surface, because this is also the patient's eating surface. So I try to keep the table as clean as possible. I have some additional linens. I also have my incontinent briefs that I'm going to be using to um, whenever I do change the sole brief. And I also have um, some of the the um, bottom or butt paste um, that the doctor has prescribed for this patient's skin condition. So, so we're going to use that as a barrier. I'm going to lower the patient's head of the bed. And that's going to um, make it easier for her to turn and reposition. I'm not going to overexpose, but I do need to pull the sheets back a little. Okay, I'm going to raise the gown. I'm going to keep her legs warm while I perform the skill. So with the incontinent brief, it has little tabs or fasteners. In addition to the tabs or fasteners, there's sometimes a line or an indicator that helps to determine whether or not the diaper needs to be changed. However, I want you to also look in, inside of the diaper because if the patient's laying on her back, if she's in a supine position, all the moisture has a tendency to rest at the bottom where her rectal area is. So technically she is dry in the front. However, your patient's still wet. And with them still being wet, they can um, be at more risk of having rashes, skin breakdown, that can lead to pressure ulcers. So don't just go by the little line or indicator. Make sure you also check inside of your patient's diaper about every two hours. Whenever you're going to reposition them, just go ahead and check the diaper area. I'm going to remove the fasteners on both sides. I'm going to take the diaper and roll it in onto itself. And pretty much right now it's situated under the pad. That also helps because if there's any water or anything that leaks, um, it won't actually wet the dry pad that's still clean right now. It'll only get on the um, incontinent brief that's going to be removed. Again, my patients check the water temperature. What I like to do is whenever I fold my washcloth, I like to make little leaves. I take the little edges and I pull those down because every time you wash a female, you're supposed to change positions. You're not supposed to use the same spot on the cloth twice. In addition to that, whenever you're wiping a female, you always want to wipe going down. You never want to cross contaminate and bring fecal matter back into the urinary tract. So always wipe down when you're cleaning a female. I'm going to wet it, wring it, apply a drop of soap, talk to my patient, explain what I'm doing, and I'm going to wipe. I change positions. I wipe the labia or the lip nearest me, change positions, and now I'm going to wipe the center. I'm performing this skill on the mannequin who's relatively clean. If you're performing this skill on a real patient, you keep cleaning and keep using washcloths until there was no more sediment or a residue left on your washcloths. But for my mannequin today, we're clean enough. That was the washing phase. We did outer, outer, and then center. And now the next part of the process is rinsing. And I'm going to rinse in the same way that I washed. I'm going to outer lip down, change positions, down, change positions, clean the center, excuse me, rinse the center. Now I'm going to get my towel. And I'm just going to repeat that process. Outer, change, outer, change, and then down the center. I'm going to be reusing this towel for her buttocks and rectum. So I'm going to sit it on top of the towel that's on top of her bedside table. So now the front area is now clean and dry. Want to provide some privacy. 
going to explain to the patient I'm going to be repositioning her. Safe positioning means that I just don't want to turn the resident right now because if I did, she could fall off the bed or if there was a rail there, she could actually be turned into the rail. So you always want to bring your patient towards you first. And so I'm going to move her body in increments. I'm going to gather her shoulders, bring those toward me, her hips. And I'm going to uncover her legs a little bit and bring her legs towards me too. Okay, I'm going to turn you on the count of three. I put my hands under her hips and her shoulders. One, two, three. Help to center her. And now the patient should remain on her side. And I'm going to go back and cover up her legs again because um, I don't want her cold as I'm giving her a bath. The diaper that's beneath her, um, with her being the size she is, I can easily take this diaper out. But if it was an, an average size person or a heavier person, you just keep rolling that dirty diaper away. I have to now clean, um, finish the cleaning process and I have to clean her rectum and her buttocks. So I'm going to wet the washcloth, wring it, apply one drop of soap, and I'm gonna continue wiping away from the vagina. So I'm gonna wipe up towards the back, change positions. And if I need to wipe multiple times, I continue that process. But for our video, our mannequin's already clean. Now I'm gonna clean one buttock and repeat the process on the other side. Check on your patient, make sure she's still doing okay. Wet it, ring it, and this is going to be the rinse process. I'm going to wipe going away from the vagina, change positions, wipe a buttock up, wipe the other buttock. And now I'm going to dry. We generally do pat dry the buttock area. You don't want to rub too much because it can be excoriating, meaning that you can irritate the patient's skin. And unless there's like an open abrasion or something there, you would not have to change positions whenever you're drying um, on the buttock. I'm gonna apply whatever barrier or skin protecting ointment that the physician has ordered for this patient. And I'm just gonna check on my patient again to make sure she's okay. Smoothing out the pad that's beneath her because we don't wanna leave patients on wrinkles. If we leave them on wrinkles, that's another area where um, we can cause a crease in the skin, AKA skin breakdown. When you're opening up your new incontinent brief or diaper, you wanna kind of visualize um, where you want the placement of the patient. So I have it open, but what I also like to do is I want to go ahead and see how much or how far I should have this pad going up. And I'm going to place it right here so that when I lay her down, because I've already kind of did an estimate of where the pad should be or where the um, adult brief should be, the patient should be centered in the diaper once I turn her back. Okay, I'm gonna turn you back now. I'm gonna uncross your legs. And she's really close to the edge of the bed, but I'm here so she is not going to fall. Once I get the side nearest me secured or fastened with the tape, I just lift the patient a little because I don't want to pull um, anything from under the patient's skin because I can again tear the skin. So I lifted her leg a little. I'm still holding on to my patient. I'm going to dispose of the adult diaper, bring out the other side of the diaper and fasten those tabs. So now my patient has on a clean diaper. If my gloves were obviously contaminated, I would take them off now, change them before I reposition my patient, but my gloves are, are not obviously contaminated. So I'm gonna reposition my patient. I'm gonna get her back centered in the bed. Try to keep the joints, the arms, the legs, keep everything in alignment. If it's been two hours since you last turned your patient, this would be a great time to change their position. And again, you're not supposed to leave any wrinkles under your patient. All right, make the room nice and neat. 
empty out your basin, remove your supplies, lower the bed, raise the side rails, remove your gloves, wash your hands, give your patient a call bell or the handheld device that's used to call for the staff when and if she needs us. Open up the door or the privacy curtain. Make sure there's nothing else that your resident needs. And you have completed, uh, excuse me, bathing the incontinent, bathing the perineal area and also changing the incontinent brief in less than 10 minutes. So I really hope this video helped you. Please again, share our video, like the video and also subscribe to our channel. I'm Eunice Mathis, one of your favorite nurse educators with Florida Training Academy. We look forward to training you again in a future video.